Ad Reinhardt was born as Adolf Dietrich Friedrich Reinhardt on December 24, 1913, in Buffalo, New York, to a working-class family of German-Russian immigrants. The family settled in New York City soon after his birth, due to his father's work in the garment trade and also as a labor organizer. It was in New York that Reinhardt began exhibiting an interest in the visual arts from an early age, where he worked as an illustrator for his high school newspaper. Furthermore, Reinhardt could consider himself a painter from a very early age and had been winning prizes for his painting in grade school and throughout high school. Thus, as Reinhardt finished high school, he declined numerary art school scholarships as he felt he'd already acquired all the technical skills necessary and opted rather for an undergraduate studies in art history, which he undertook at Columbia University in New York in 1931. It would be at Columbia University that Reinhardt would meet and study under Maya Shapiro, an iconic American historian of art, who was known for his Marxist views and had introduced Reinhardt to radical campus politics, which shaped the leftist views that he maintained throughout the rest of his life. Reinhardt graduated in 1935 with two majors, which included literature and art history, both which gave him a solid understanding and foundation of culture and informed him of the latest and past trends in visual arts, as well as its theory. Reinhardt had additionally been taking painting classes as an undergraduate at Columbia's Teachers College, so that when he graduated, he would be able to begin his artist training, which he first undertook at the National Academy of Design and later at the American Artist School on 14th Street in New York. It was at the AAS that he fell under the influence of two progressive painters, Francis Chris and Carl Holty, who were both influenced by the European traditions of Cubism and Constructivism. Around the same period, he was accredited by painter Burgoyne Diller, which allowed him to be one of the few abstract artists who was employed for the Works Progress Administration of the Federal Arts Project. While working at the WPA, Reinhardt would be in the Easel Division, and would meet artists such as William de Kooning and Arshil Gorky, who he would maintain a friendship with and influence his work. In the 1940s, many of his peers had been experimenting with figurative works influenced by surrealism. By contrast, Reinhardt worked only in an abstract mode, and had been from the very beginning of his career. In fact, it would be in the late 1940s where Reinhardt would become deeply interested in Chinese and Japanese painting, as well as Islamic art, and more importantly, East Asian philosophy. During this period of Reinhardt's life, his works became mainly influenced with geometric abstractions, which he had learned as a student. It would be around this period that Reinhardt would protest against the MoMA, designing and producing a leaflet that asked, how modern is the modern museum of art? Although this was not his only design work of the period, he also made posters for the war bond drive and did artwork for the Office of War Information designed promotional material for the Columbia Broadcasting System, and created baseball magazines for the Brooklyn Dodgers. After this period, Reinhardt would serve in the Navy from 1945 to 1946, where he served briefly aboard a ship in Salerno Bay right before the war ended. It would be in 1947 that he accepted a teaching post at a Brooklyn college. Unfortunately, Reinhardt would die of a heart attack in 1967 while working at the same college. However, he also taught at other schools, such as the California School of Fine Arts in San Francisco, the University of Wyoming, Yale University, and even Hunter College in New York. In his later periods, Reinhardt's work became more mature and was characterized by a search for an absolute form of abstraction. He began his search in the 1950s, devoting his paintings to what appeared to be a singular color from a distance. Reinhardt believed that the current form of abstract expressionism, which reached prominence between 1943 and the mid-1950s, was fraudulent with excessive emotional innuendo. In response, he experimented to create art which contained no suggestions of narrative or emotion and withheld the slightest reference to anything outside of its canvas. Indeed, Reinhardt emphasized profusely through his art and his career that art is art, claiming that certain creatives were more interested in social work rather than creating. Despite Reinhardt's claims that the works themselves contain no outside influence, his work was not created within a vacuum and the self-reflection abstraction of his work ultimately depicts a reaction to the socio-cultural climate of the Cold War. The Cold War was a period of geopolitical conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union, which began in 1947 and ended after Reinhardt died in 1991. Although both parties were technically at peace, each was involved in an aggressive arms race, proxy war, and ideological bid for world dominance. The impact on art was profound as it began to be used as propaganda for both sides, where the symbolism, allegorical nature, and physical beauty were signifiers of ideological strength of either side. 
art then became recognized for its mode of communication and power as a medium of influence, whereupon art became a tool solely for countries to discuss and represent themselves to the world. Reinhardt devoted himself solely to his black paintings from 1954 until his death in 1967. The artist believed in the profound symbolic potency of the color black. For him it was the absolute zero, the end of light, a point so irreductible the painting is a genre which pushed to its limits of expression. Most of his black works are untitled and he labeled them as the ultimate painting, for he claimed them to be the last painting that anyone can paint. Furthermore, he made this claim as he felt that abstraction evolved as a series of substractions, and he was creating the final possible form of reduction. These paintings ask the viewer if there can even be such a thing as an absolute, even in the color black, which some might not consider a color at all. Indeed, his paintings gained immense prominence because they were not black once perceived the way they were intended. Reinhardt prepared his paintings extremely methodically, where each work consisted of careful arrangement of tonalities. They were meticulously applied in multiple layers to give the impression of black. Reinhardt added to this effect by siphoning off the oil from his pigments, making the surface acceptable to absorbing light into the painting and reflecting very little back onto the viewer. However, the subtleties of the reflections allowed for different representations of the painting from various vantage points, as the slight tonal variations of the painting were conveyed through Reinhardt's ability to design different matte black pigments by mixing in warm and cool reds, greens, and blues. Observers would first be blinded by the black square, but as their eyes adjust, they would be able to reveal the spectrum of colors and textures hidden in the work. As their eyes and minds adjust, viewers come to realize that the painting is not a negation, but rather a climax of color and form, which Reinhardt defended himself. These paintings relied not only on their presentation, but intrinsically on their viewer, whose perspective would change their appearance invariably. Reinhardt described these works as collective, for the paintings exist outside of the cultural context and thus may only exist in relation to those who perceive and interpret it. Indeed, it was incredibly shocking to viewers to perceive and examine these works without a narrative, palette, or any other element, which was the current norm of art. In fact, Reinhardt allowed and even encouraged the interpretation of his art as a negation of space and time, but more importantly, history. Such an ideal was extremely heteronormative as it forced viewers to experience the art without having to refer to preconceived notions or, more aptly, images of things. At the time, all paintings relied on its audience to relate and refer to its presentation but form to that which they understood or could not understand. By forcing the audience to evaluate the work solely within its reality, the work could not be criticized, and Reinhardt emphasized profusely that they were the first paintings which could not be misinterpreted. His works emphasize that as culture shifts and retrospect is gained on the events which inspired painting, so does the art change. By definition, such works then become synonymous with the events or period that shaped them and cannot stand on their own. However, by fragmenting a work from culture, it becomes fully formed on its own time and does not depict an image or representation, but rather an entirely separate and distinct reality. Instead of forecasting the death of painting, Reinhardt's work affirmed the potential for paintings to transcend the rhetoric inherent in their normal presentation. Although he claimed to have painted the last paintings, as an art historian, Reinhardt understood that there would be no end to painting as long as there was artists willing to paint. In fact, Reinhardt's impact on the art world redefined the possibilities of art and illustrated its modern limitations. His black works became pivotal cornerstones in the evolution of abstract expressionism throughout the 1950s and went to influence the later decades of minimalism and conceptual art. Minimalism emerged in the early 1960s alongside artists who felt that recent art had become too academic, leading them to rediscover the conventional boundaries of various mediums. These new works emphasized anonymity over the excessive emotion of abstract expressionism, whereupon artists overtly avoided symbolism and emotional content, focusing rather on the construction of their work. Indeed, the minimalist movement praised the creation of unconventional and radically aesthetic works, which were removed of biography and metaphors. Notable minimalist artists who Reinhardt directly influenced are Frank Stella, Donald Judd, and Robert Morris. However, it was the conceptual artists that rejected the minimalist approach to the construction of art and focused rather on Reinhardt's emphasis on collective works, whereupon if an artist created a work, it would be the gallery and its audience that completed it. The conceptual art movement of the, of the mid-1960s throughout the mid-1970s abandoned beauty, rarity, and skill as a measure of art. Rather, the works acknowledged that all art is inherently conceptual and the, presence, and the material presence of the work should be reduced to the absolute minimum. 
The works of prominent conceptual artists such as Saul Lewitt, Joseph Boyce, and John Bella de Sardi were often self-reflexive and spoke of art as art, whereby claiming that art need not look like its traditional expectation or even take any physical form at all.